welcome to pointcarding.com and today we're back with another 16 for Briggs 206 and this time we're talking about one of the most vital things to get right on your Briggs 206 engine and that's how to set valve lash. Setting the valve lash on your engine is crucial to make sure that the engine breathes properly and operates at peak operating performance, temperature, and pressure. Not having your valves set properly will cause the engine to run improperly and cause the intake, combustion, and power, power stroke and exhaust stroke to happen at the wrong times and give you poor performance, uh, poor air and fuel mixture in the combustion chamber and other sorts of maladies that you don't want when you're out on, ra on the racetrack. So to set your valve lash, one of the first things that you're gonna wanna do is ideally have an engine that's set there cold. Now, you can check and adjust your valve lash when the engine is warm, but generally most people will do it after the engine has had some time to cool at least one to two hours, if not more. One of the first steps that you're gonna to wanna to do when you wanna start checking your valve lash is relieve uh, major sources of compression in the engine. And the first one that we're gonna relieve, of course, is the spark plug. So to start with, the first thing that you wanna do is pull the spark plug boot off, and there it goes. Then you'll need a 5 8 inch deep socket. Um, you can use a wrench, but you'll have to pull the uh, cylinder shield off and I wouldn't recommend that. Um, simply apply some pressure and break it loose. Then remove your socket and turn the rest by hand. As you remove your spark plug, try to note for any resistance, any binding on the threads as this could indicate maybe uh, some worn threads on your spark plug. This one we can see of course is brand new. Once that is off, the next step is gonna to be to remove our rocker cover. Some people call it a valve cover. Either way, there's four 10 millimeter hex head bolts and we'll need a extension and a 10 millimeter socket to pull that off. Break them loose and spin them all the way out. Ideally, when you are removing these, you want to do this in a fairly clean environment. So uh, naturally, we don't want to be doing this in a dusty area somewhere with a lot of rain or water as we don't want any contaminants getting into our engine. Um, to do so, of course, would uh, contaminate our oil or the internal um, metal components of our engine, um, which would further harm uh, our performance. Once those are off, you can go ahead and remove your rocker cover and set it aside. And now we can see our valve train. For those of you that aren't familiar with the four strokes of a four cycle engine, we're gonna have a separate video going over the combustion cycle and how that all works in a separate video with a link below. But for those of you that are, let's go ahead and review those strokes briefly while we pull the pull cord and go over how to find top dead center of our compression stroke. That's where we're gonna wanna set our valve lash. So to start cycling the engine once the spark plug and the rocker cover are removed, simply grab the pull cord and pull. Here we can see the intake stroke to press, then we can see our compression and power strokes, and then, of course, the exhaust. It's important to note that on the compression stroke, there is a detent on the cam that has a compression release. This is what allows us to start the engine and isn't normally engaged while the engine is under power, but allows us and gives us a tip to find top dead center of our compression stroke just before the power stroke begins. At this point, the camshaft in the engine is turned over, relieving all pressure on our valves, sealing them tightly in the top of our head assembly, and relieving pressure off of our rocker arms. For those of you that may be familiar with the concept of valve lash, this is the distance between the crown of the rocker cover and the top, or sorry, the rocker arm itself, and the top of the valve stem. And that's what we're trying to find to set our valve lash correctly. On the Briggs 206, the best way to do this is find your intake stroke by pulling the pull cord, there it is. Then we look for our compression release or what some people call the flip on our exhaust uh, stem. As we see that start to release, now we can take an Allen wrench, stick it through the threaded hole for the spark plug and feel for the top of our piston. As we continue to pull on the compression stroke, we will feel that piston rise up in the combustion chamber and you want to feel for the very top of that stroke. At this point, feel your rocker arms and you will feel a slight bit of play. What this is telling you 
is those valves and the valve stems are back seated all the way up to the very top in the cylinder head and our rocker arms have pressure relieved off of them and that's going to allow us to adjust our valve lash. So we have our spark plug removed, our rocker cover off, and we're at top dead center and we're ready to check our valve lash. What do we need next? Well, we need one of these tools. This is called a feeler gauge and it has very fine pieces of metal at specific thicknesses that are stamped on the actual gauges. Um, for a Briggs 206, I'm going to recommend that you go to uh, your local auto parts store that maybe isn't, say, an AutoZone or an O'Reilly, maybe something a little higher end like an o or a, a Napa auto parts store or even your local mom and pop shop as some of the feeler gauges that you're going to need to set valve lash are going to be on the finer end of the scale and not all feeler gauges are created equal. Or, of course, you can find them online. I like to set my valve lash on both intake and exhaust at 0.002 inches. Some people will set them at zero or as close as they can get. Some people will set it at a larger gap than that. For me, since I know my uh, valve lash setting, I'm going to find my feeler gauge setting uh, or my feeler gauge that I like. And again, that's my 0.002 inches uh, feeler gauge here. And I'm going to insert them in between the top of the valve stem and that crown in the rocker arm and feel and uh, try and uh, gauge what my gap is set at already. Or some people would say what my lash is set at already. So take your feeler gauge, insert it in here between the rocker arm and the valve stem cover, and I can feel very little resistance at 0.002. That would suggest that on my exhaust valve here, I have a little bit more lash than I would like. To adjust that, take a four millimeter Allen, place it in, your uh, adjuster screw here and break it loose. Once it's loose, back it out several turns so that it's not interfering with our fine adjustment. Back your adjuster screw out and you'll notice that the play increases substantially on your rocker arm. To readjust this, simply turn the uh, rocker arm adjuster screw back in until you can feel that you have lateral play side to side but very little vertical play meaning that the rocker arm doesn't move up or down relative to the valve stem. Right around there likely is going to be the area that you're going to want to feel for your feeler gauges. At this point, bring your feeler gauge, your back, feeler gauge back and insert it between the rocker arm and the uh, valve stem, or the, uh, the valve stem of uh, the exhaust valve in this case. I can feel a significant resistance now as I try to slide this in between, so I'm pretty happy with my valve lash after making that adjustment. To hold that adjustment, use a 5 8 wrench and put that around, open end wrench, and put that around your uh, adjuster and bring your Allen in, your 4 millimeter Allen, and retighten your cinch bolt. For the exhaust valve, I'm going to so strongly suggest that you have a ball end Allen wrench as this can make getting in there to get that properly tight a little bit easier around the exhaust pipe. Of course. You can remove the exhaust pipe, but that's a little bit more work. Once this is tightened, then of course, you would check your intake valve. And once you're happy with both, our valve lash is set and it's time to reassemble the engine. Most of this is essentially the reverse order of what we've already done. We're gonna take our rocker or valve cover, depending on what you wanna call it, place it over our uh, valve train and our rocker arms, and then by hand, re-thread these bolts into the uh, rocker cover support plate. It's worth noting that three of these bolts are the same length, but one is slightly longer. The one that is slightly longer threads into the very bottom of your rocker cover. Once these are threaded in or started by hand, go ahead and take your 10 millimeter wrench and tighten them the rest of the way down. Many people will recommend going in a hex pattern, and you certainly can do this. But considering how tight you get your rocker cover, this isn't always necessary, but it is important to tighten them progressively. I like to work in a series, either clockwise or anti-clockwise around my valve cover and progressively tighten them as I get them to how tight I need them. And what I would say is about half a turn past hand tight. Um, there is a gasket between the rocker cover and the rocker cover support plate. It's important that this seals tightly so that any excess oil or pressure in the valve train um, goes out of the 
uh, hose that goes into the rocker cover. We have it removed, removed here for display, but normally it's included. Lastly, now that we've reinserted our valve cover, we have all of our uh, valve lash set. We then reinsert our spark plug. Again, start it and thread it by hand. Feel for the thread engagement. Once you have several threads in there, take your socket, run it the rest of the way down, and then with a ratchet or wrench, depending on your preference, you can go ahead and tighten. Be careful to not over tighten your spark plug, as doing so can strip the spark plug or over exceed the crush gasket. And once fairly tight, reinsert insert the spark plug boot. Listen for that little click of the metallic clip that goes at the very top, like that. And now we have successfully set our valve lash. That's it for this installment of the 16 for Briggs 206, where we talked about how to set the valve lash properly on your Briggs and Stratton 206 engine. For more info and for more tips on how to get the most out of your Briggs 206, head on over to www.pointcarding.com, your number one source for all things Briggs 206 and all things karting. Thank you.